Hey guys, Paul Yama here, and today I want to do kind of an FAQ um, or just kind of general questions answered, um, kind of about collecting, why I collect, and general other questions like that. Um, what sparked it was a question on my last video that I released maybe like two days ago, where after I uploaded it, the guy was like, oh, another collection for the sake of collecting. And at first I was kind of like, well, how dare he? Um, but then I thought about it, and then I talked in the Discord about it briefly, um, and so I kind of asked them for more questions that kind of, you know, warrant an answer. Um, and so I, I thought about some of this stuff during, during my work day, and now that I'm home, I kind of want to answer some of them. Um, so I have like, you know, like five, ten-ish questions, I don't know if I'll hit them all. Um, but the first question would be to kind of address the, the comment that I just talked about which basically goes into the topic of um, why do I collect? Because if, if the guy's saying you collect for the sake of collecting, which is, which is basically what he's saying, I, I'm collecting these things, um, like I'm collecting them, but I don't really care about them, like I'm not reading them, um, you know, I have them just because they're, just cause they're rare or because whatever. Like it's kind of implying that I'm not really a fan of the content itself. I just like having them. Um, and, like, number one, that's okay. Um, it's totally okay to collect stuff just because you like how it looks or you like having it because it's rare or, or you want the bragging rights or whatever. Like, that's a-okay. Um, but, like, it's a complicated question. It, it really is because some of these things that I have, you know... You can boil down to, well, I saw it, I, you know, I saw it, some guy was selling it, and I'm like, well, I hear that's kind of rare, so, yeah, I guess, I, I hear it's kind of rare, it's a decent price, so I guess I'll just pick it up. Like, there's definitely some of those in here. Um, let me see if I can think of an example of something that I got, and, da -da -da, something that I got that was like a, like a, like a good pick, but I really just don't give a shit about. Um, I know I have something here. Okay, maybe... MPD Psycho might fall under that category. I have the first four volumes. I got a decent price for it. Um, but I never really plan on reading it or anything. I just thought it was like... The cover art was kind of interesting. It was a decent price. It's it, like... What is it, Dark Horse? Dark Horse only published about half of the series. Um, so I was like, all right, yeah, it's kind of interesting. So I guess I'll pick it up. Um, but sometimes other stuff has more of a backstory to it. I don't know why my camera, like, goes at an angle. I tighten it, maybe. Um, so for an example, and I do have an example. I couldn't think of one for a while, but it, once I walked in my room, it came to me. Um, FLCL. This is my favorite anime, like, of all time. I love this series to death. But... What's that got to do with manga? Well, FLCL has a manga. And I got this manga a long time ago. I think I got it as a birthday gift from a coworker, maybe like four plus years ago. This is one of my first manga, if not my first. Um, and so like, I, I read it a while ago. And like, it wasn't bad. It was, you know, was kind of like the show. I mean, it wasn't nearly as good as the show, I didn't think. Um, but like, it was still cool. And since I love FLCL, it's like, you know, what's not to love about having that? Um, and so eventually, like years later, maybe like half a year ago, I picked up the original Tokyo Pop volumes. Um, like literally the exact same thing, but since I like FLCL, it's like, well, damn, I got to get all the FLCL stuff I can because I, I love the series. You know, I got, I got Lord Conti down there. I got two Contis. Um... So it's like, all right, I got to get the FLCL stuff. And so I did that. And then I found out, like I saw, um, I saw when I was searching on right stuff a long time ago, I remember seeing the artwork for this and I'm like, will this stand up straight? Holy shit. And I remember thinking to myself, what the heck is this? Because I didn't know that there was a light novel series for FLCL. So I'm like, what is this, like, alternate art for the manga? And so whenever I saw that listing on, like, Amazon or Rice Stuff, I'm like, okay, well, that's just the manga. So I ignored it. And then I found out 
um, a while ago that like there was a light novel. And it's like, well, damn, there's a light novel series for FLCO. Let me check this out. And then I'm like, okay, well, their first two volumes are cheap. You know, I, the first two volumes are cheap. Um, so I was able to get those for like four bucks each, even though they're out of print, just because it's early Tokyo Pop, I guess. It's just available. And then I found out that volume three was like pretty rare. And I was like, all right, well, you know, this super rare, expensive um, light novel from a series that I love, it's going to be hard to get. And so, you know, once I found it, I was like, all right, well, I got to get this, you know, and like, I can't think of a specific manga that branches off from this, but I know for a fact that there's been times where I hear about, like, I learn about the story of a manga and why it's rare or out of print or whatever, and then I hear about a similar series that's been out of print for similar circumstances. Like, Berserk and Gantz kind of kind of go hand in hand. They're both series by Dark Horse that are pretty expensive to complete, um, have similar issues with their printing. Um, so, like, if we... Da, 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 if we look, the... Uh, you see the spines on Berserk? And how they got, had that really shitty Dark Horse bar when the majority of these had that DMP? There was a first print of Berserk that was by Digital Manga Publishing. Um, they're the ones who did, like, Trigun and stuff, too, down there. Um, and then... Dark Horse reprinted it with these. And so some people are kind of stuck with this really shitty mix of the spines. And Gantz has the same issue. Um, holy shit. I completed my collection of Gantz, but not without... Where is it? Can I zoom in on this? All right, well, I guess not. Um, but that volume 22... Sorry, it's a little weird. Right there. Volume 22 is, uh, it's only available in the Dark Horse, um, like the new Dark Horse spine. Um, but ba the, the point is, Berserk and Gods have a very similar history and a very similar, uh, very similar attributes to each other. And so basically what happens is a lot of these series that kind of look random aren't random because your interest for each of these series can be related to your interest or acquisition of another series. And it's a big ass web of stuff and it's very complicated. Um, but basically like, unless you ask somebody, you're never really going to know why someone picked something up. And even someone who picked it up might not know why they picked it up until they think about it a little harder, but they're not meaningless pickups. At least some of them aren't. Some of them are because they're just that good of a deal, but whatever. So, that's, I mean, that's part of the question. Um, I'll go back to it when my camera decides to align itself. I'll go back to it when I get to the end of this and see if I answered it. But, uh, next question, how much do I buy pre-owned compared to new? So, pre-owned would be buying from somebody online, buying from a second-hand store, buying from anywhere but, like, Barnes & Noble, right, stuff, Amazon, etc., um, and so for me, that would probably be, I would buy probably, uh, 75% pre-owned and about a quarter would be new. I bought like Poon Poon new, Attack on Titan, um, some like random series like Blade of the Immortal, Erase, Spice and Wolf Partly. Jojo, stuff like that, but a lot of stuff that I have, Yomushi Pedal, a lot of stuff I have, I got second, or pre-owned now, simply because a lot of them are just out of print. Um, so like, or like just not all on shelves. Usually when I get a series, I get the whole thing at once. And like, that's a lot of money. Like if you're buying all of your line in April, that's $10 times like 12 bucks. 10 times 11. That's 110 for the full series. Or you can buy a second hand for like 50. So yeah, alright, well, I guess I'll do that. So yeah, about three quarters of it is pre-owned. Um, do I mind publisher marks or remainder marks? And those would be, like, see a, a dot like that. Um, I know I have some more. 
It could be a library thing. That's a library copy. I know I have something on some of these Spice and Wolf volumes. Some of the later ones. There we go. Some more of those dots. And the answer is no. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't bleed into the pages at all. And um, it doesn't really affect literally anything. So I personally don't mind. It gives the manga a bit of wabi-sabi. So I kind of like it, actually. Uh, what am I most proud to own would be the next question. And the thing there might be a couple. If I had to pick, if I had to pick one, 100%. It will be FLCO White Novel Volume 3. This is, my, this is the thing that I'm most proud to have. This is like... This along with... Uh, da, 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 the Spice and Wolf Collections. Those are my favorites. And... Da, 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 guilty Pleasure. I should have... Two, I think. Number one is Kisses. It's a Japanese manga. It's not published in English. Um, there's an anime. There's an anime based on it. Or based on this. Um, I like it. It's not good, but I like it. So that's the first one. And the second one is the Love and Hell series. There's a sequel, too. Um... This is a very good manga. So that's my guilty pleasure manga. Manga I regret buying. There's a lot of manga I regret buying. Um, let's dislodge this from the tripod. Manga I regret buying. Um, da -da -da -da, maybe Beck, only because I never seem to see it pop up anywhere else. So finishing it's going to be kind of annoying. Um, I didn't buy this, so I don't care. Uh, case study of Vanitas. I, I really don't give a shit about it. I'm not totally sure why I bought it. Uh, the Bebop manga. Defrag. More main remarks. I got these for super cheap, though, but I still don't. still wish I didn't buy them. Um, hmm, Gintama Volume 1. Da -da -da. Love at 14, Volume 1. I didn't buy this Log Horizon one, so I don't care. Um, probably this uh, Lone Wolf and Cub and Samurai Executioner. Don't really care about that. Uh, this Shinji Akari Detective Diary manga. And there's, there's some more, but those are probably the most important ones there. Most of the stuff on the rest of my collection on this side of the bookshelf is pretty good. So, yeah, those are those are the main offenders. Uh, next up, manga I want to like but can't get into. First one would be Planets. Second one would be Neon Genesis Evangelion. These are probably the two biggest ones that I wish I liked. But for some reason, I just don't like that much. Um, and I, for the most part, I think I know the reason. And it kind of boils down to... The manga is very, very similar to the anime. And I've seen the anime. So when I read the manga, it kind of feels like I'm just rereading it. And I don't, I don't really reread manga. So... None of this, none of this manga. When I read it, feels fresh or new, and so I just don't really care about it. They're very good. Like I, I acknowledge they're good, but I really just don't really care that much. So that's a shame. But they're nice. Next up, why haven't I started Vinland Saga yet? I haven't started it because I don't have all the volumes yet. That's why. I'm not going to start it until I have the majority of the series. And Vinland Saga almost never turns up um, on like Manga Swap or eBay. 
in any more than a single volume. So it's not really affordable secondhand to get it yet. So that's why I haven't read it. How much have I spent? I've spent, I, I calculated this earlier when the question was asked. On all of my manga, my figures, my, I'm sorry, this is a total mess, um, but my anime, there's some more manga, these, those are duplicates. Um, some of these, some of these figures that, uh, anything up there count? That lucky star right there counts. Um, there's some box sets up there, but all of that combined, I've spent about twelve and a half thousand on the, on my hobby. And this is over the course of maybe like five years, but the majority of the spending is in the past like two, maybe like one and a half. So, so that's where that is. And I don't regret it at all. That also includes the hentai on the bottom, down there. So that's, that's it, twelve and a half thousand dollars roughly. Probably, uh, probably actually 13,000 even, because I think I remove stuff from my spreadsheet after I sell them. And I have a few things that I sold, so. Around 13000 um, And so, to kind of go back to the question of why I collect. I collect because I like it. And anybody who collects something would understand that not, every, not everything in your collection has the same, like, sentimental value... You know, the, not everything is not everything is good in a collection. For one, like there are totally legitimate reasons for a collector to have something that's not good, something they don't care about. Um, it's, it's because, on a whole, it makes their collection better, um, and it, it really is hard to justify a single individual piece in a collection. But once you have your collection of whatever it is, you know, whether it's manga, books, records bugs, like whatever it is, once you just walk in your room where you keep it and you just kind of look at it, like some days when I walk in, you know, I'll get out of my shower, getting ready for work, I'll walk in, see my messy room, but then I'll, I'll just kind of look over and I'm like, damn, I'll look at all my stuff, I'll take out like a volume, like I'll grab like a random Pluto volume and I'll just kind of feel it, flip through the pages a little bit, put it back, feel how it feels to go back in the shelf. You know, maybe I'll, like, look over to something that was, like, hard to get. Like, damn, look at that Cat Eye Boy Volume 1. Man, I really got it. You know, or I I very often pull out my Spice and Wolf and just open up that big behemoth of a book just to feel it. And it, it feels good. It really does. It really feels very good. And it's very hard to explain. But it makes me feel good, so that's why I collect it. And if you don't agree, well, then you can make your own channel. How about that? All right, see you guys next week. Bye-bye.